Do you ever wonder how successful people just seem to have it all together? It's like everything they touch turns to gold. They set a goal, they accomplish it, and it's like they have a magnet for good things. It's like the world is conspiring to do them good. And yet a lot of times, maybe you're just struggling, you know, just to get by, or maybe you're having success but yet you're ready to break through to that next level. You just know that there's something more and you know if they can do it, you can do it. And let me tell you, that is true. Well, after hanging around millionaires and actually a few billionaires over the last 10, 20 years, which completely changed my life, I learned that there are a few things that they do that are very simple that make a massive difference. Now, here's the great news. The things I'm gonna share with you today are things that you can do. They're things that you can implement immediately, and I can promise you if you're persistent, you're consistent, you have a good attitude, you absolutely will have positive results with these seven tips to attract success fast. So let's get into it. As we get into tip number one, first, let me just encourage you, like, Fight the urge to go, oh, I know what that is. It's very simple. I really don't need to hear that one. Let's get to the next one because you're going to hear some things today, maybe a little bit differently than you've ever heard before, or maybe the timing of when you hear one of these tips is going to be the right timing. It's going to hit you just the right, right way. That soil is going to be ready for the seed and you're going to reap a harvest. You're going to have an aha moment that you've never had before because yes, these are simple tips but they're effective. And when you look at millionaires and billionaires or successful people, no matter what area of life they're successful in, these things affect every single aspect of our life. So number one, again, very simple, it's having a positive attitude. You can't live a positive life with a negative attitude. And if you've been following me for any period of time, you know I like to keep things very simple. People go, Darren, what is your superpower? It's simplifying things. It's saying things that other people can really get and really comprehend because that that's the way that I learned. You know, complexity is the enemy of execution. I like to keep everything very simple. And I like fun little sayings that I drill into my mind. So as I'm going through day-to-day -day life, those scenes stick in my head and that filter helps me push forward and achieve things that I've never achieved before. So one of those fun little sayings is, you know, no stinking thinking. Like sometimes we have to have a checkup from our neck up. And so if you hang around positive people, successful people, maybe it's an athlete, a successful spouse or parent, business owner, millionaire, billionaire, they have positive attitudes. When you have a positive attitude, it is a magnet. You attract more positive people into your life. You attract positive and bigger opportunities because we don't attract what we want. We attract what we are. And we all have those friends, or maybe we've been guilty of saying this at one point in our life. Like, man, if anything bad's going to happen, it's going to happen to me, right? Bad luck. If I didn't have bad luck, I would have no luck at all. And you look at that person and it's true. Because what we seek is seeking us. What we focus on, we attract. What gets our attention gets us. So when you have a positive attitude, you're looking for the best in people. You're looking, you're grateful in all opportunities and situations, asking the right questions. What can I learn? How can I grow? How can I add value? And you're looking through a positive attitude that lends then what's going to happen? You're going you're to have opportunities open up to you that you normally would not have open to you. You're going to have relationships that open up that weren't there before. And so positive people, they're more resilient. And it's a filter that everything goes through. And it's so true. We see what we're looking for. So even though it's something so simple, you can have people that do these same activities. One has success. One does not have success. And you go, what's the difference? It's not the how-tos. It's the philosophy and the attitude behind those. You may or may not have heard Tony Robbins, one of the top you know, coaches and, and leadership um, you know, uh, experts, you know, may, one of the most successful entrepreneurs in the world. His companies do billions of dollars a year. 
He's coached presidents. He's coached pro athletes. Like he is the best of the best. He says 80% of your success is mindset. It's psychology. Only 20% is skill set. So the good news, once again, that tip, number one, having a positive attitude is something you can start implementing today. Now, remember, it's a battle moment by moment. It's not like you go, okay, I'm switching the positive attitude on. I no longer have a negative attitude. You're going to have to work on this and rep your mind, rep your attitude like you rep your muscles in the gym. It's a constant battle, displacing the negative with the positive. If you have a dirty glass of water and you put it under the faucet and you have this fresh, pure, clean water that is coming right into the glass, it's going to displace the dirty water with the positive. So you learn to block the negative and then you learn to fuel the positive. And then over a period of time, because we have all of these thoughts every single day, 70 to 90,000 thoughts, it's not an instant process. But it's about progress, not perfection. Can you get a little bit better every single day with your attitude? Yes, you can. Tip number two, define what success looks like to you. You're the only one that can determine what success looks like for you. Most people think that success is a destination. Hey, one day when I arrive at that location called success, you know, then I'll be happy. And we've heard, you know, the, the sayings, and I know, uh, you know, success is a journey, not a destination. And we go, oh, it's just a motivational quote for a wall. But it really is true. If we don't enjoy the process and look at it as, hey, look, you know what? This is a challenge, right? This is fun. You know, every day I'm looking to be a little better version of myself today than I was yesterday. And we have the ability to create and design the life that we want. We have that ability to go out there and do that. But let's be real. Most people spend more time being intentional and creating a vacation. They spend more time planning a vacation than they do their life. So let's be very intentional about creating the life that we want. You're going to create it in your head before you ever see it in reality. Right, Bob Proctor said, if you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. Here's an assignment for you. Don't just watch this video and get excited and go, man, that's motivational. Or maybe you say it's not motivational. I don't know. But go, hey, look, I'm going to sit down. And if you created the perfect day in your life, have you ever done that? Let me know in the comments. Have you ever created the perfect day? Like this would be the perfect day for me. I would get up at this time. I would have my coffee on the deck. I would, you know, do my personal development or I would do devotions. I would take my kids to school. I would work by the beach. Create the perfect day. What would the perfect week look like for you? The perfect month look like for you? It's a great exercise. And what it does, it gets you energized. When you start living your life on purpose, when you start being intentional, when you think about what do you really want, what does success mean to you? Because here's the flip side. I've hung around some millionaires and billionaires that are the unhappiest people I've ever been around in my life because they didn't really know what they wanted and, and they were just looking for something that did not fulfill them. So what is it that you really want? Why do you want it? If you've, if you've never heard of the seven levels deep, it's basically going, hey, look, why do you want to do what you want to do? Why do you want to accomplish your goals and your dreams? And you go, well, I want to do this. Let's just say, for example, you go, I want to make money. Why? Well, I want to have more time freedom. Why? When you dig down seven levels deep, you really get to the root of exactly what you want and why you want it. And yes, that'll change over a period of time. But successful people, millionaires and billionaires, they create and design the life that they want, and you have that same ability. Number three, evaluate your associations. It took me years. I would hear this and go, yeah, skip the rah-rah. Just tell me what to do. At my age, 49 years old, when I'm doing this video, I will tell you I have never been more intentional about associations in my entire life because I realized that, and I heard these things, but really it didn't sink in until the last several years. 
You catch what you're close to. Charles Tremendous Jones, Charlie Tremendous Jones, he goes, you will be the same person you are today five years from now, except from the books that you read and the people that you meet or the people that you associate with. And it's true. Your associations work harder on you than you work on them. And if you don't believe me, just think about it. If you work, if you hang around people that like to party, they like to drink, they like to party, they like to stay up late, most likely you're going to do the same thing. If you hang around people that are health conscious and they eat healthy and they exercise, you're probably going to do the same thing. And so when you realize that, look, my associations, you become the average of the people you, sh- you hang around the most. You show me your circle of friends, the closest circle, I will show you your future. And they're like an elevator. They're lifting you up or they're bringing you down. So when you ask yourself, and it's important, when we go through each of these tips, ask yourself empowering questions. Because your brain is like Google, it answers what you give it. Bad questions get bad answers. So when you go, look, let me write down, what are my associations doing to me or what are they doing for me? And then you start to be very intentional. Who are the people that I want to spend more time with? And for a period of time, I didn't have a lot of associations, especially good associations, many, many years ago. So my associations were books, audio programs, courses, seminars. Now with technology, like right now, you and I are hanging out. We're, we're each other's association. But who are the people that you want to get close to? You want to be more intentional about learning from them, hanging out with them, because that's very smart. Because why would you spend your whole life trying to figure out what to do right when you can hang around other people that spent their entire life trying to figure out what to do right? And they can teach you and shorten your learning curve, compress time frames, right? You can read a book, shave years off your learning curve. So who are the people that you want to associate with? New associations. Who are the people you want to limit your associations, <laughs> your time with? That's important too. You know, when you're on a mission, it's very important who gets in your circle, who takes up your space, who takes up your energy. You only have so much energy. And then there's some people. Now, I, I don't go out and say, look, I need to eliminate you from my associations because you don't have the same goals that I do. But there are people, if they're if they're toxic, if they're negative, very negative and toxic and you know, you know who those people are, then there may be a place and time where you know what, it's time to cut that connection, at least temporarily, so you can laser focus on achieving what you want to achieve and going after those goals. And another reason that associations are so important, because we only get in life what we feel like we deserve. It's that, and different people talk about it different ways, and they use different examples. But I like the, the, the internal thermostat example where they go, look, if I feel like I'm a 75 degree person, then no matter what happens in life, if things get too good, I'm going to self-sabotage, you know, come right back down to 75 degrees. And I've done that in my life. And I bet you probably have too at some point, but if things get too bad, then we'll kick it in and we'll heat it back up to that 75 degrees. And then people, they say things like, look, no matter how hard I work, I take two steps forward and three steps back. I seem to only just get by. You know, I'm on a treadmill going nowhere fast. And they start thinking that way and speaking that way. And that's who they are. And and they have a hard time breaking past that. So when you start paying attention to what you think, pay attention to what you speak, and you associate with the right people, and I like to intentionally seek out people that are higher temperature than I am. I like to seek out, you know what, let me get around people that make me feel uncomfortable because when you start hanging around those people and before your self-talk may have said, hey, you know what, they must be that much smarter than I am. They must have a, a lot more education than I do. They must live in a bigger city, have more resources, have more connections. Somebody must have handed this, them some things on a silver platter. And when you hang around them, you're like, you know what, they're no different than I am. And you start going, if they can do it, I can do it. And you start to raise that internal lid, that internal waterline, and then you never go back to where you were before. And so you, you know you were created for something greater than what you're living right now. You know, we were created, in, in, I believe, in the image of our creator, right? I believe that. We were designed for success, but then society 
programs us for failure. And it's time that we break to that next level and we go out there and we get what we're worth, which is a lot more than we are right now. How do I know? Because none of us live up to our human potential. But when you start changing your associations, that possibility thinking just goes to another level. Number four, okay, very simple, but very important. Be intentional. Successful people are intentional about everything in their life, most things in their life. Let me just say that. They're not perfect, but most things, they're very intentional. And when they create these habits, it applies to every area of their life. They focus on what they really want. They focus on where they're going, not where they've been. They focus on what they want, not what they don't want. They don't look back because they know they don't want to go that way. They focus on what they can control, not what they can't control. What they can do, not what they can't do. They focus on setting goals. And then once they have those goals set, then they're intentional about, okay, what are the things that are going to lead me to those goals? The high payoff activities. Some people call it KPIs, key performance indicators. So they know that every day they're getting a little bit closer to their goals. And listen, success doesn't just apply to business. We know that. It's about being intentional about the relationship with your spouse, with your children, your health, your business, your spiritual life. Because listen, this is not a dress rehearsal. We don't get to the end of our life and go, hey, you know what? I want to redo. Let me just do this over because I didn't do exactly what I wanted to. I wish I took a few more risks. No. That's why when we're intentional, and if you have the mindset, I heard someone say this years ago, and I've never forgotten it. Treat every day as if it's the last day of your life, and one day you're going to be right. So let's be intentional. Let's make every single day count, and this is the way to do it. Number five, okay, and this is one that may sting a little bit, but you know what? If you're watching this video, if you're still hanging in there, then I have a lot of respect for you because you're going, hey, Darren, you know what? I'm watching this video because I want you to tell me what I need to hear, not what I want to hear. I know that if I keep doing what I'm doing, I'm going to keep getting what I'm getting. And so to get something different, I've got to do something different. So you're hungry, you have that desire, and you're saying, coach me. And with the companies and the leaders and the different people that I work with, that's what I love. They go, you know what? Just hit it, hit me between the eyes with it and tell me what I need to hear because I want to raise my standards. I want to go to the next level. And so knowledge is not power. No matter what we've heard, there's a lot of a know-it-all broke people. You can know it all and be broke. Knowledge is not power. It's potential power. We have to go out there and do the work. And we can't complain about the results that we're not getting from the work that we're not doing. It's so easy to complain about the results that we want, but we're not willing to go pay the price. We have to step up to the counter and pay full retail price for success. There's no shortcut. Matter of fact, if you try to shortcut it, that's the longest distance. I mean, let's face it. I wish this was true, but we don't go into the gym because we're talking about our life, not just business. We don't go into the gym, work out one time, and then come home and lift up our shirt and go, man, where's the six pack? I can't believe it. The gym membership didn't work. Well, guess what? It's not the gym memberships that don't work. It's the people that don't work. So we have to have faith. Listen, if we go out and we pay the price, we do the work. Because if we're not having the success that we don't want or we, we want to have and we should have, we're either not doing something enough or we're not doing something right. So we have to make sure that we're focused on doing the right things. It's a natural progression. It's a natural process. We don't plant a garden today and then look for the harvest tomorrow. We know, look, there's a different season in planting the seed. You don't reap the harvest in the same season that you plant the seeds. So why do we think that success is an overnight deal, right? It's a, it's a process. Now, can you get there a lot sooner than later? Yes, because I'm teaching you some things that took me many years to get. How do I know these things work? Because 20 some years ago, I was on government assistance. 20 some years ago, I had my car repossessed just a couple streets over from where my office is right now. I was depressed. I was a college dropout. I couldn't feed my family. And I learned these things. And I go, you know what? These are things that I can do. And not only did I learn these things, I went out and completely changed my life. So if you would have told me, Darren, you will be doing the things that you're doing now, I couldn't see that. 
but I had faith that if I did the things that I'm talking about, eventually I was going to get to where those other people could get, and you can too. Okay, or maybe you're looking to break through the next the next level. You go, hey, Darren, look, I'm already having success. Well, this is the way that you break through to that next level. Because a lot of people that I coach and I work with, the mistake that they make is one that I made many times. But I hired the right people to come into my life because Les Brown says, listen, it's hard to read the label when you're in the box. It's hard to see the picture when you're in the frame. And a blind spot is called a blind spot for a reason. You can't see it. I can't see it. So when those mentors and coaches said, Darren, the mistake you're making is you stop doing what you did that got you to where you are. And so I don't want you to do that. I want you to learn from what we're talking about right now so you can compress time frames, shorten your learning curve, and get to where you want to be sooner than later. Number six, choose accountability. Now, accountability, it's a choice. We have to choose accountability. You can't make somebody be accountable. However, apathy, if you've never heard the definition of apathy, it's a natural human instinct common to us all to seek a comfort zone where nothing ever changes. See, comfort zones were designed to keep us safe. Comfort zones, they look at sameness as security. So when you look at, hey, look, everything that I ever wanted to achieve in my life is right outside my comfort zone. It's time to get comfortable at being uncomfortable. Comfort zones are a beautiful place, but nothing grows in a comfort zone. So when it comes to accountability, choose accountability. And for me, I try to have accountability in every area of my life. I like to work out. You may go, Darren, doesn't look like it. I can't help that, right? I love to work out. I know how to work out. I've been working out since I was a teenager. and But yet I have a trainer in the gym because one, I know that, again, a blind spot is called a blind spot because I can't see it. They can see when I'm not having proper form, but they also push me out of my comfort zone and push me way beyond what I would do if I was just there by myself. So whether it's physical, spiritual, every area of my life, I choose accountability knowing that I will never get to where I should be or could be in my life without accountability. Choose accountability. Okay, and the last tip, number seven, which in my mind is the most important tip of them all. And this is one, look, I'm not a financial advisor, but I will tell you this is the, the best investment advice you will ever get in your entire life. People go, hey, what's the best investment? Is it stocks? Is it crypto? Is it real estate? I'm going to tell you right now. Tip number seven, the best investment is to invest in you. When a mentor told me, hey, Darren, you know what? At the scene of every accident, there's one person. It's you, right? I mean, you're not making what you want, Darren. You're making what you are. This is 20 some years ago. I didn't want to hear it, but that's why it's important to have people in your life to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. And he goes, look, you don't make what you want. You make what you are. You don't attract what you want. You attract what you are. So if you want to make more, you have to become more. What did Jim Rohn say? Set a goal to make a million dollars, not for the million dollars, but what you become in the process. And I met a guy many years ago that won the lottery right here in this town. And he was sharing a story with me. And he goes, Darren, they made me watch a video that was like a horror story. One after another one before they gave me $1 of that millions of dollars and it was one story after another going, look, the lottery is the worst thing that ever happened to me because the studies and statistics show that most people not only lose all the money that they were given, but they go back to a place worse than where they ever were before they won the lottery. Why is that? Because they didn't become a multimillionaire. They were given millions of dollars and our income always comes back to where we are. But yet if you take someone the no success principles, a multimillionaire, a billionaire, you strip them of all their money, what will they do? They will go out, and I know Grant Cardone just did an a, a undercover billionaire. They took all his money, threw him in a city where no one knew him, he had no resources, and he went out and he created, I forget how many millions of dollars, in like 90 days, right? Because he became that type of person. Who are the people that you want to seek out? It's not a cost. See, broke people say, look, oh, that will cost me this. That will cost me that. No, that's an investment. Jim Rohn says, look, formal education will make you a living. Self-education will make you a fortune. 
over the years, I have invested multiple six figures, multiple six figures. Everything that I want to learn, I try to find the best and I go to them because I don't want to waste time, right? That's one thing we can't get any more of. So if I can hire someone to work with me, coach me, take their course, go to a training, go to a seminar, it's going to shorten my learning curve. It's not going to cost me anything. It's an investment. It's going to make me money and it's going to make me money in multiples. Again, this doesn't just apply to business. It applies to every area of your life. I would save a certain percentage of your income every single month and continue to reinvest it back in you because you take you with you everywhere that you go. If you got value out of today's video, do me a favor and sub smash. You may go, Darren, what the heck is sub smash? Well, it's where I messed up previously and I went to say subscribe and smash the like button and I mixed them together and I'm like, hey, you know what? That was an accidental discovery. <laughs> Let's just sub smash to the channel so that way you don't miss any of the videos that I have coming up. And then also I will put my website, which is my name, darrenkid.com, on the screen and also in the description. And in the description, we will also put the show notes, different links with free resources. So my website is a way that not only can you get more information to help you on your journey, but also there's ways to connect with me. So I appreciate you watching more than you know, like you're the reason that I jump on here. You motivate me. The stories of how these videos and the trainings and the information impacts your life. So put the comment below, like what is one aha moment? What is one tip that you needed to hear today and what are you going to implement? And so I like to go through and not only read each and every comment, but reply to each and every comment. And it helps me with future training videos. And if you're watching this and go, you know what? There's some friends of mine, people that I know, love and care about. They need to hear this, share this with them as well. So I appreciate you more than you know, and can't wait to see you on the next video.